Hello everyone, and in this video is produced for those who uh, signed up on my webinar and also probably missed my webinar due to the time um, prior engagement. So I thought I'm going to produce a, a series of video highlights based on the discussion, the questions I received in the webinar. So there, are, there were a lot of business challenges you are facing, obviously. So, and then I actually, when I review all this webinar, so I I think there are seven to seven, uh, six to seven questions which are really most needed help for KV businesses. So that's why I'm producing this series of video. The first question, oh, before I start, so the, uh, here is a link for the business survey. So if you, uh, I would really appreciate if you could still participate and it's just a three minute survey to help us understand more about your challenge. So we can better design our educational program, capability program to improve and then to actually drive growth for you. First question is, who is your target market? Many people said my target market is Asian market. Well, this is too broad. If you use this as your target market, it's it's just going too hard for you to target and then too expensive for you to spend. So when you say Asian, this word, and then they are Asian living in New Zealand, they are Asian living uh, Asia, and they are Asian living all over the world, you really have to define geographically and then also characteristically, you also need to define are they middle class, are they single women, are they young families who live overseas? So all those kind of uh, features are very important when it comes to define your target market because it's directly related to your marketing budget, to your resource, to your time spent on that, I would suggest that, you know, at the start, you really need to narrow, narrow, narrow down and then do not go broad. You will get overwhelmed by all the learnings. So your product will have some kind of key features. So based on those key features, find the link with the benefits it can provide to your target market and seek which target market really better suits for your you know, product. And then also ask you the question whether this target market have enough financial power to afford your product or services. Well, it's easy to reach if it's too difficult to reach, you're going to spend, need to spend a lot of energy, money, resource, time on reaching them. And then you may not find that the return on investment is worthwhile. So that's why a lot of questions you need to think about before you really define clearly about your target market. So I'm going to just briefly using New Zealand and uh, Asian market uh, we call it New New Zealanders as an example to show you how many different categories there. So basically, my analysis um, uh, separate them into four categories. Type one, the undecided. So the, for the undecided category is, uh, well, I'm going to stay in New Zealand or go back to my home countries. So there are a group of uh, um, people like that, Asian people like that in New Zealand. Although they stayed in New Zealand, they are the resident in New Zealand, but they're still unsure, undecided. So it is very, it's a bit hard to engage with them because their priority is to decide where they're going to reside. Right now, there are some uncertainty in their life. So that, that's some, even this market, uh, we call it rich Asian, but it's still, it's very hard to decide and also to engage with them. The number two is the family ties. So they either have a family member um, in New Zealand, or they kind of, or they kind of have to. Like for example, if you have a kid in New Zealand to study, and then you kind of uh, you want to be with your kids, so you kind of have to spend half a year uh, here with your kids and a half a year here in Asia with your husband. So that's a very normal for an Asian family. It's not very normal for Kiwis, but very normal for Asian families all around the world, not in just the New Zealand, in Canada, America, you know, um, you, Europe. There's always people, especially moms like that, they 
they want they they what they call it we sacrifice they sacrifice their time half for their kids half for their partners and then so and then also there are business people who are doing uh, things like that uh, for men for businesses and then they have their business in asia so but they also want to be with your uh, their wife and kids in new zealand so they decide spend half of time uh, half a year you know in asia half a, earning the money to support the family and half a year to have a, like a holiday or and you know get together time with their um, family and then type three is the new new zealanders i would call it that is the new zealanders like myself who actually have spent like you can see nearly half of my time in my home country and half of my time in new zealand so that's why we call ourselves a Kiwi New Zealand, a Chinese New Zealanders. So we cannot call ourselves a Chinese anymore because we actually we didn't live in uh, in China, uh, you know, every year. And then so we most of our grow up time, growing up time, are here in New Zealand. And then so we are by culture. We have a mixed identity, so we accept uh, more. We are more open-minded to accept different things. That's why we are actually are facing more opportunities as well and more struggles probably. Um, so, um, but this a group of new New Zealanders, they basically are quite a, a young generation. Like, uh, for example, from twenty-five to forty-five. And then they are, uh, they have a job, and all they have their own business. So, uh, reasonably success and the middle class. So, that's why for all my campaigns in the past, the type three uh, were the target market I went for, and type four is the established new New Zealand, uh, new New Zealanders. So, what I mean by that is they come to New Zealand probably when they are very young or even they were born in New Zealand, they have an Asian face, but they have a total uh, Kiwi mindset. So if you ask anything and to them, uh, like value, belief, they're pretty much very similar to Kiwis. There are no different uh, culture differences uh, um, between a Kiwi and an established uh, New New Zealand, apart from maybe their family, their roots. So you want them to host some of the heritage, uh, Asian heritage. So, and then some of them can only speak Cantonese, and some of them can speak a little bit Mandarin, and some of them try very hard to learn the language, to actually learn a little bit Asian culture, even they really look like Asian. So those are the established new New Zealanders. They integrate with New Zealand mainstream very well. And then so it is not very hard to reach them and then to market products uh, to them. But it all depends which one you think holding the most financial power, you know, to buy your products and which one it's most easy for you to reach. So that's the question you kind of need to think. So by the end of this video, I would like to give you some question to think about. How would you define your target market? And then that's the key to your success. What is the financial power of your target market after you define that? So because you, you actually need to measure uh, whether it's worthwhile for you to spend uh, that marketing budget to market to them, uh, whether they do have the financial power. And then the last question I want you to think about, how easy it is to reach your target market? So you, because this is, all this question is related to your return on investment. If it's all about, you know, how much you have to put in and how much a return you can get from. And then, so this actually um, decides how you're going to define your target market. Thank you for watching the video and please follow us on Facebook and you will see more of those kind of um, capability um, catalyzing video, you know, to talk about developing growth in the Asian market.